So I think this is Rafi Media Villa from CriticalOS.com. Thank you for taking your time to talk about the movie and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Listen, I'm a sucker for movies based on a true story. So I know I'm getting a little bit away of, 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 with, with, with that, but but it took me by surprise and it, it really got me thinking this is still happening. And it scared me, you know, to think that this is still happening. What was it about what happened, you know, in 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 West West the West uh, the West Mesa murders that that taught you, hey, I, I need to tell the story. Well, that's a good question. Thank you, um, Rafi. It's, um, it was a blend of many different reasons. And yes, the West Mesa murders from Albuquerque, New Mexico, was one of the cases that inspired this, you know, and we centered the story kind of, you know, inspired from that case. But it also takes inspiration from many other serial killer cases that I'm sure you've seen in the movie where it um, looks at all the different uh, different types of serial killers that are out there and the different types of cases and the situations and the types of victims. Um, but our main purpose and goal for this was to bring awareness, you know, about these kinds of cases and this being a global crisis of having serial killers and murderers and kidnappers and traffickers, you know, basically... Um, you know, taking the lives of these victims and affecting their family members. And even not only just the family, but the other side of it are the law enforcement personnel that are being affected by this daily and the 24 seven work and dedication that they put behind it. And then all the different layers that are there, you know, part of the investigation that takes the investigation from one way to another. It's always a comp, complex case, you know, in each case by case. So that's something we tried to show, you know, through this, by taking those inspirations and the complexities in this. You mentioned something that I was going to jump into uh, in one of my questions. I'm going to jump ahead to that one. And you were you, were, you just spoke about law enforcement and, and, the, and, the, and the toll it takes on them. So I, I, I would love to know, is there something that you learned from this project that you you didn't really realize, uh, then you learn from it after you made the project. When it comes to the the, the respect that you have for law enforcement, absolutely. I mean the the one major thing I could say is what we kind of try to show with all the different characters is what inspires them to be doing what they're doing. You know, it it's a very tough life what they have, especially with uh, the pressure of of saving lives with the, you know, uh, a ticking uh, time bomb type of, uh, you know, they have to solve this case before the next victim pops up or mm -hmm. he, he strikes and kills someone else. So that ticking time clock is, 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 is horrific to be under that kind of a pressure in this profession where, you know, we don't realize what these people go through. Um, so that takes, uh, I mean, you know, a whole different level of commitment and dedication and service. Um, so we tried to kind of showcase a little bit of that and from the law enforcement characters' perspectives of what's their loss and inspiration and motivation for committing, you know, to um, these cases. Well, how much, I know, obviously, this is basically loosely based on a true story, but how much, and this is a movie and we got to make it Hollywood so people can enjoy it. So, but I wonder how much of it uh, were you able to make it real and how much of it is just Hollywood, you know, making a movie being a movie? We had to take some definitely, you know, theatrical licensing and creative licensing and making it Hollywood and dramatic. Um, which, you know, in, in an hour and a half, it's very challenging to develop all these different characters we've had with all these layers and to be able to tell this, you know, story. Um, but, you know, a lot of it fit in well because my style of approach to this was to, you know, give it realism and, and have that real life feel and connection to the characters where, you know, it's... It's not over dramatic. It's not over, you know, Hollywood and theatricalized to where, you know, you, you can't relate. Everyone can relate to somebody in this film in some situation. 
Um, I, 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 you just mentioned something else that I, I, I'm curious about, and it's the the art of what I need. Of what I need means movie to me is a is a lost art. We it, Hollywood is struggling to make a good ninety minute movies. Like we used to have great ninety minutes movie in the nineties and the eighties and nineties and late late two thousand. And I think Bonjour to me is a perfect example of what is that what it takes to make a good ninety minute movie. What are the challenges to make a good ninety minute movie? The challenge is to um, definitely keep it contained in 90 minutes. You know, our, our original cut of the movie, I could tell you, was over two hours. So we had to, you know, um, cut it and lean it up. Um, it's it's there's so much to tell, especially with these mm -hmm. stories. There's so much with the characters and so many little pieces and details that, you know, just makes it feel better and more clear. But sometimes, you know, we don't have. Um, unfortunately, that at that time to uh, tell it all, but at least um, you know being able to tell it enough to drive the story home was our goal, and um, I think we've done that. You know, I gotta talk about the cast. Great cast: uh, Amel, Nora, Fifty, and obviously Brian. How did it came about? And obviously, I more than anything, I'm a fan of his music. I want to know how was it working with Fifty Cent because you know he's one of those people that has transcended from music to Hollywood, like many others yes. have done, but he's so good. How was it working with the cast? It was great. I mean, every single one of the cast members, you know, were very committed and dedicated to the role, um, like 50 Cent, you know, you see him in a whole different way than we're used to seeing him, right? And he really owned that character. I mean, even the press conference scene where normally in real life you would see a police chief looking down at his notes and talking to the press. In this case, you know, he was so into it, he memorized that entire speech and that announcement during the press conference. He never even looked down and he didn't even want the paper in front of him. He just, you know, became Chief Carter uh, dealing with the press. And so um, that was across the board with all of them. Even Mel, you know, um, brought it, a hundred percent in every scene and you can see it the scenes you know don't lie and um i was very blessed to have that kind of a commitment from these you know great actors one final question before i let you go uh, if you don't if you don't have to mention anything if you you can you cannot but i i love the ending and the ending tells us a lot do we have something else you're know, brewing around in the future yeah, I mean, this is just like in real life. I mean, these cases, um, in a way, I mean, they, they, they're almost never ending. You can always find new clues, always find new pieces that, you know, leave the door open to explore more, you know. So um, there's definitely some possibilities of carrying on and, and you know, uh, exploring more of those stories. Thank you, Asif, for taking the time to go and we have congratulations once again. Thank you, Rafi.